everyone and welcome back to another video with me, Country Wood Girl. I'm so excited to share this two-part video with you. This is something I've wanted to make ever since I first got my hands into woodworking. And that is a Sam Maloof inspired rocking chair. Now I'm sure many of you know who Sam Maloof is and if you don't, do go check out who he was because he was really inspirational and the videos and books, he even made his own DVD, are a really good watch. Now, this rocking chair that I'm making is out of London Plain. And as you can see, I've made some MDF templates that you can buy in paper form online. Now, I say it's an inspired chair because I have tweaked the templates ever so slightly to make it like slightly different curves, just because nobody likes being a copycat, do they? Anyhow, let's get on. So I'm going to try and explain to you what I'm doing throughout this video. However, it is going to be quite a bitty video as when you're hand carving something like this, you often need to do one piece to check the other piece is going to fit. So I'll try my best. So first things first, we're going to cut the timber, we're going to plane it, we're going to dance all those parts out. Now I'm going to let you watch things and then I'll come back and talk to you when there's something new to describe what's going on. I really hope you enjoy this video and if you do, please hit the thumbs up button, comment and subscribe. Check out all my other videos because it really puts a massive smile on my face and encourages me to film more and more. I just want to thank you all who are already subscribe to me you're all amazing and I'm just so lucky to have you all watching me So the seat is going to be made up of four pieces and here I'm just checking that they do look okay all together and I do get some mess out just to check that the colour is going to all match. And I was pretty happy with that so I kept it how it was. You can see everything here is now planed up and ready to be cut out on the bandsaw. But first we're just going to focus on that seat because it's easier just focusing on one part, getting that right, going on to the next. So in order to get these seats to go together how I wanted them, I needed to put a slight angle onto each one. Now what I'm drawing here is very exaggerated, but to do so I just take them to the planer and put that angle on the way I've drawn. So I just push it tight up against the fence and straight over the planer and I put it over again just to get it a really nice join. And as you can see I've gone all the right ways because I drew those lines on just to double check I would be going the right way. And now I'm going to put some joints in, I'm going to put my dominoes in. And now to do this you do have to be really careful into where you're putting them because you don't want to carve through them later on. This is why I'm going really low with them, you'll see that in a moment. I just managed to get it glued up and now we're onto the saw just to square everything up to where I've drawn those original lines on. And next was to do the joints for the legs. For this you needed a big router and a guide bush and again the template you can get on the book and DVD it tells you exactly what to do. So I go a little bit of the way through and then jigsaw the rest out. This way I know I won't go past the line that I need nice and square. 
and then I just continue with the router to go all the way through and that leaves it lovely and square. I then decide to do exactly the same with the front, however the template is slightly different because the legs are different size. Next I'll be adding a rebate to this, and this is really simple to do because it's got a bearing guide so you just run around with it, and this literally just creates your joint, this is what will make it really strong. So now that we've got the seat ready jointed for the legs, we need to get the legs ready for the seat. So to do that, we're just going to create a large groove done on the saw. You just need a good eye and a ruler to check your height. There is actually like jigs you can get for getting it exactly the right height, but I've kept mine slightly under so I can neaten it up with a router after. We're now just going to add a round that will match that rebate cutter that we put in so it means we don't have to cut anything square and the joints will have this really cool round effect. You'll see what I mean if you stick around and watch the video as it progresses. So now that the front legs have their groove in ready to match the seat, we need to do the back legs. And before we can do that, we actually need to shape the back legs and we can do this with the spindle. Now don't worry if you don't have a spindle because it can all be done with a router. But since I've got a spindle, I'm going to be using it. So as you can see here, it's just basically like a big router cutter. It's a straight cutter with a bearing guide on the bottom. And as you can see, it just cuts it nice and flush.
Now we don't want our back legs just to be straight up and down. We actually want them to flare out a little bit and give a little bit of an angle, which will make the chair look more appealing and look more like a rocking chair, which is what we're aiming to do. So to be able to do that, we just need to glue a block on. And then after the glue's gone off, we'll then go back to the saw and we'll cut that angle onto it. We'll also thin down the rest of the leg because that just means less hand work later on in the game. So if we can do it, we will. Now this jig is to groove the back leg ready for the seat and it gives it the right angle to go for. And again it's just a straight cut and a bearing guide and set to the right depth. It's really simple to work out once you sit down and look at the DVD in the book and maybe this video might even help now. the joints done and we're happy with how they fit which is really important to do while it's all flat while you've got a flat surface to run the routers off and cramp jigs onto but once you're happy you can move on to actually shaping the seat and to do this I've made this jig which is basically just to give me an edge to work to because I'm going to be using grinders and sanders and all sorts to get the shape that I want so I'm just using a rounded cutter and I'm just going to keep going down slowly, slowly until I see the depth that I want and I'll just carve up to this point. To do that we need to use a 10mm cutter to go 6mm down so we can plug it after the screw's gone in. And we want to do this at this stage before we shape the legs anymore while we've got flat surfaces to run on. Now to be able to work out where the holes need to go, that's written in the book and on the DVD of Sam Malou, so it's really worth buying that if you're thinking of making one of these chairs. And now that we've got them drilled, we want to take off as much timber as we can with the bandsaw before we glue the legs on. Because once the legs are glued on, it is literally just down to hand tools. And to be able to take that much timber off will take a long, long time. So if I can cut it down on the bandsaw beforehand, I definitely will.
So that's the seat and legs roughly shaped and ready to be glued together. So we need to now work on the arms. So I'm just drawing around this template that I've got to where the grains go in in the timber because we want that to match quite nicely. And then I'm just going to take an angle off because we want these arms to be angled up. And again, you get this angle from the DVD and book. I can't remember exactly what it was. But you can see there, there's the angle onto the front, the front leg. And to get the back one, I'm just matching up a bevel square with the right angle to cut on the saw. The next part is the headrest and that is very simple it just again wants to be either out of one piece or two pieces if you don't have the thickness to get quite a nice curve on then do it out of two pieces and just put an angle on so it lifts it up like I've done there and now you just want to cut out the shape um, but you want to keep the top of the headrest with a flat on to start with because you want to drill for your splats and obviously you want to drill it nice and square so you are going to need some sort of flat so don't shake the top of it quite yet and to cut the angles on the side I'm actually gluing on some dowel and now if you work from your center line and make sure they're parallel this will work really well and it means you can get a nice square cut at the right angle and then shape the front to the nice curve and as you can see here this is me drilling it and you can see I've got a slight flat on the top um, I was obviously quite tight for timber at this point, so I only managed to get a little flat on, but that's all you need. It just keeps it nice and square for your splats. So that's the end of the part one of this video. There will be a part two. If you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell, you should see it pop up when it gets released. I hope you stay safe, and I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you next time. Bye, everyone.